God is good and all the time that's right we are we're living in a days where God said that he is going to pour out his spirit and the reason why we need the outpouring of his spirit is because in the last days Bible says that sin will abound but thank God for the grace of God that's going to abound even more and any addiction any limitation anything in our life that binds us by the grace of God tonight will be broken in Jesus mighty name amen, amen. and so um, today I want to talk I'm going to just dive straight into uh, the word I have a lot to discuss a lot to talk many examples to bring and uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about on the subject of kingdom and my topic is called war, war of the worlds we're going to talk today about the reality of the spiritual world that the spiritual world exists not only that the spiritual world exists but it exists and it contains two kingdom it contains kingdom of God and it contains kingdom of darkness you know even if you're not even if you're not Christian in, even if you're still discovering God and you're not sure if God exists but most of us can agree in one thing evil exists most of us looking around listening to the news um, you know just just by looking around in the newspaper Facebook feeds Twitter feeds and other things we can one thing know for sure that even if you're doubting if God exists we can know one thing for sure Satan exists demons exist evil exists and logical next step that that's that's coming to my mind and should be coming to your mind well if there is evil there must be good if there is evil there must be good and we will talk about God's kingdom today we're going to discover what it is we're going to talk about demonic kingdom what it does how to discover up its influence in our lives and how to most importantly break it over our life in Jesus mighty name amen church <clears throat> I'm just going to lay a foundation with the scripture and um last time i was preaching i got this negative comment uh, they said that um, i didn't bring my bible to preach so uh they were offended so i do have my bible it's right here and uh so that just in case for those of you that um wondering and uh, if you can open with me to matthew 6 and those of you that don't have a bible uh, a bible with you you can read it with me off the screen matthew 6 chapter uh, chapter 6 verse 9 and it's a famous scripture and you probably know it even if you're not a Christian in this place it goes like this this then I is how you should pray that's Lord Jesus saying our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come say your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so Jesus teaches his disciples to pray and first thing that he tells them to pray about is he tells them pray that God's kingdom will come and his will be done on earth that is in heaven amen, amen. Um, kingdom is dominion kingdom is rulership kingdom is uh, authority supremacy and um, we as a as a children of God we were created to dominate we were created to rule we were created to have dominion lion gives birth to lions eagle gives birth to eagles God when he created us he created us in his likeness and he and in his image he has given us the authority and he told us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to have dominion he gave us a dominion to rule over the earth and every creeping thing so as a creation of God as children of God as but blood children and his people we have dominion and we have authority and when that authority was given to us that authority was given to Adam in partnership with God so as Adam as Adam walked with God he walked in that authority he ruled he reigned over the earth over every creeping thing over everything but when Satan and sin came into his life he lost his dominion he lost his rulership so in our life when we walk with God we walk in dominion when we walk with God when we walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit we walk in authority and the moment we walk we walk away from God we lose our dominion so it's either we are so either we dominate 
or we are under dominion and like Bryson beautifully stated that there is no middle ground there is no gray ground it's either you are victorious with God or you are under dominion of evil spirit of demonic spirit of dark kingdom which is demonic kingdom so first thing that we have to understand clearly in our mind that there is no middle ground either we dominate or we are under dominion when we walk with God we walk in dominion we have power to overcome when we walk in sin we give legal right for Satan to dominate over our life in, and in the Garden of Eden in the Garden of Eden Adam he sold his dominion he gave up his dominion by biting the forbidden fruit by committing sin and from that point on the whole human race was sold to slavery to the kingdom of darkness when Jesus came on this earth and Satan was tempting he took him to the high mount and he said look all the kingdom of the earth he said they all belong to me bow to me and I will give it to you the reason why Satan could say that is because that is because in the garden of Eden through sin Adam gave his right to reign and became a slave and so we see from the moment of the garden of Eden we see throughout the history we can see the king the kingdom of Satan and what it rep represents and what it does and if we look in the history uh, of our earth if we look in the history we see the bloodsheds we see wars we see epidemics we see sin we, we see broken lives broken hearts we see broken destinies and we can see what the kingdom of Satan what the kingdom what evil kingdom is doing and was doing and this was because sin sin entered our lives and because sin destroys our lives and so we see that through um in the kingdom of darkness that sin reigns satan reigns and bible jesus said that satan came to kill and steal and destroy and as we see in bryson's testimony we we recognize that sin brings guilt shame and condemnation and this is the kingdom of satan influence of king uh, that's what the influence of kingdom of satan does and if we watch the exorcisms and we see deliverance when people are delivered from uh, evil spirits we we see that when they begin to confess the evil they have done when they begin to confess what they have done how they stop people's lives how they limited how they brought sickness how they destroyed their life how they tormented them we see the reflection and we see what the kingdom of God stand, uh, what the kingdom of Satan stands for and what it brings I want to quickly kind of give you a couple characteristics of what demons do and what the kingdom of what the kingdom of Satan does first thing is demons they entice they harass they compel they enslave they cause addiction they defile they deceive and they attack physical body so all of these characteristics are the characteristics of the kingdom of darkness and if we look at those characteristics and if we find any of those eight things in our life operating we can be guaranteed we can be sure that this is nothing but the kingdom of darkness and its influence and if we look at all these things and what they lead to we can quickly understand we can we can quickly understand what the kingdom of Satan represents and what it stands for the reason why we need to understand the spiritual world is understanding spiritual world is the only and the best explanation of human suffering it puts God on our side and it reveals the real the real enemy see when we do not understand the kingdom of darkness we do not understand how it operates we don't do not understand how in, it influences we can easily begin to blame God and a lot of people blame God for all the calamities on the earth 
for the hunger for the poverty for the earthquakes for the wars from the for the bloodsheds for the for the uh, corruption and for all these all, all of these things all these bad negative things and so people say well where is God when all of these things happen and if you do not understand the spiritual world if you do not understand how the spiritual world operates it's very easy to begin to blame God for all the negative things that happen in your life and it's happening around the world even in Jesus's life one man was blind and they came to Jesus and they said Jesus whose fault is it his fault it did his sin or the parents so because Jesus was aware of the spiritual realm he was able to discern the problem correctly and he said it's none of it's not his fault or his parents but when we are not aware of the way the kingdom of Satan works and the way a kingdom of God works the way spiritual world operates we could easily blame people for the problems that they're struggling with the problems that they're facing or we can blame God or blame ourselves in a, in, a, in a testimony that Bryson brought is that he explains that how he was blaming himself for all of these things that he was doing. He was fell, feeling guilty, feeling dirty. But behind all of it, it was a demonic influence. And when it was broken, a person was free and was able to live a fulfilled and full life. If you're here in this place and you're, 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 you're listening and you're thinking, oh my, but... I can I can relate to certain things in my life I can see there's certain things that that are enticing me certain things that harassing me compelling me or there are certain things that I'm enslaved certain things that I can break in my life every compulsive behavior in your life is a demonic influence any things that you do because you do them you want to stop but you can't you said so many times to yourself that I will stop doing it but you can't stop it's a demonic influence and it can be broken in Jesus mighty name I remember um, a, a young man in my home group it was a while back and he came to me and I was still I was just I was still really young and I was still just getting to know uh, the spiritual world the spiritual world just kind of opening up to me and I remember he came to me he said uh, pray for me I have a problem with stealing so I was like okay no problem sure uh, Lord Jesus please help him not to steal just kind of typical prayer God give him grace not to steal and that was it I remember one time we were driving <clears throat> And then I pulled up to gas station to fill up my gas and so it was summer our summers as hot as you can as you can tell in Tri City so I went into the convenience store to get some drink and he went with me I said hey do you want anything out of the store I'll buy anything just just pick whatever you want he already had a drink he's like no I don't want anything um yeah uh, so I went and got my drink come out and he comes out and he's like holding like beef jerky steak and bunch of other stuff and I knew he had no money okay I he was a teenager boy and and I was like hey where where'd you get this I was like oh just took it I was like no hold on what, what do you mean just took it and so he goes and just dumps it in the garbage I was like why did you dump it in the garbage he's like well I don't I don't want it I don't need it I was like why did you take it he said well something told me to take it and so then I begin to realize that his problem was more than just um physical problem his problem was spiritual problem and I remember when I explained to him these things and I I, I, I told him I, I knew very little at that point but I said you need to ask God for forgiveness and you need to renounce it and you need to rebuke it and we're gonna pray together we're gonna come against it and so I remember um uh we we prayed it right actually right there in the car I prayed with him and um you know it was nothing special happened at that moment he wasn't like manifesting or he wasn't uh, vomiting anything he wasn't shaking nothing special happened but we prayed a prayer of repentance we renounced it and we rebuked it and we closed the door and later on like three or four months later he testified I remember we were sitting in rocket club uh in jacuzzi and he said you know what I come to think now I haven't stolen anything for four months come on let's put our hands together for Jesus And then you know I begin to ask him more and he begins to explain to me how he had these impulsive thoughts, how he had these, these, these impulsive desires, these harassing desires to, to, uh, to take stuff, to steal stuff, even if he didn't need it. Even like in that case, he took it, got out of the store right there, right at the pump. You know you got those little garbage cans where you can wash your windows and garbage cans. Right there he dumped it in a, in, a, in a garbage can because he didn't even need it. 
but because something inside of him was telling him to take and um, anything if you notice out of all these eight things that I mentioned that all of these characteristics are, they are very invasive nagging and they're forceful there's nothing positive if you find yourself in if you find yourself in any of these things today is your date God can break that over your life and you can live a free life amen, amen. this is the kingdom of darkness I want to talk take some time to talk about the kingdom of God Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit uh, Romans 14 17 John the Baptist before Jesus came and he said he was preaching that repent because the kingdom of God is near and then here goes Jesus comes on the scene and Jesus begins to demonstrate what is the kingdom of God kingdom of God he begins to go and preach the gospel as a matter of fact in the first sermon he gave a clear picture of what the kingdom of God looks like it, it was he was reading a scripture from Isaiah 61 and pretty much what that was it was a prosperity preaching the good news to the poor it was the healing of the heart it was freedom from the prisons from addictions it was preaching the favor of God and how uh, comforting those who mourn and helping people rebuild this Jesus summarized that and he said that this scripture is fulfilled now Jesus was staying what the kingdom of God looks like and then the first thing that Jesus does as he casts out a demon I want you to notice that I want you to notice that Jesus casted out a demon right afterwards the reason why he did it is so that he can reveal and show he wanted to reveal and show the reality of two worlds the reality of two kingdoms he also want to reveal and show that he is supreme above every demonic influence and above every demonic kingdom. One interesting thing that I've, I've noticed reading through a New Testament is that every exorcism Jesus did was in public. It was to, re it was, it was to reveal the reality of two kingdoms and to show complete supremacy over the kingdom of Satan every exorcism every casting out of demons Jesus did it was never in private it was because when we see when demons are being cast out we begin to see clearly the reality of two worlds that there is God's kingdom and it is kingdom of Satan and we can easily discern and can go at the root of the problem and begin to bring freedom to ourselves and to other people Jesus all throughout his ministry cast out demons healed people delivered people and gave people freedom and when he left this earth he told disciples to do likewise he said go and preach the gospel lay hands on the sick cast out demons baptize people heal people you will try trample upon scorpions and demons every creeping thing Jesus and when and when his disciples begin to preach the gospel everywhere where they went they confronted demonic kingdom and they cast out demons and set people free today we have to realize that the kingdom of God and kingdom of Satan is at conflict that the kingdom of God and kingdom of darkness are constantly fighting and Jesus says that the kingdom of God suffers, suffers violence and only violent men will take it by force and so today as we listen to those things as we hear these uh this truth we have to arm ourselves with the truth so that we are able to come against it and so that we are able to see the problem clear and strike the problem at the root when we are able to address problem on a spiritual uh, level then every, the symptoms on a physical level will disappear Jesus has given us the authority over every darkness over every uh, over every keeping thing he gave us the authority to trample over every demon and today we're gonna pray and we're gonna come against and we're gonna rebuke every generational curse we're gonna rebuke every influence of Satan and everything that hinders us in our lives amen I want to I want to roll that clip it's uh, it's actually from from our prayer line a video and it's a uh 
it's a confrontation between kingdom of God and kingdom of darkness and I want us to watch it carefully and I want just I want us to listen what the demon confesses what he says and you I want us to see how then at the end this man is set free and then we're going to talk a little bit more about this who are you Look at me! What have you done in his life? I give him everything. If he had it all. What does he have? Uh, what did you give him? Everything he wanted right here in his heart. He had it. In his heart? Everything. Uh, what exactly? Uh, everything. He wanted cars. He had them. Women, guns, drugs. Oh. <laughs> Open your eyes. Look at me. How did you enter his life? Oh, uh, uh, one movie. What movie? Uh, uh, the Godfather. That's all he wanted, to be a gangster. Uh, and you entered him to that movie? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. And I gave it to him all. Everything. Uh, uh, what is your name? Oh, perversion. Perversion. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, pride. Pride. Arrogance. Arrogance. What else? When did you enter his life? Uh, How long ago? Uh, he was just a kid. He was just a kid. Uh, how, had you, how have you destroyed his life since then? What did you do in his education? Ooh, oh, he was a great mind, this one. Oh, he had a mind. He had a mind. Uh, what did you do with it? Oh, I made him want those things. Money, drugs. You, you made him want money and drugs? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, he was a good mind, this one. He, he was a good mind. What did you do in his relationships, in his, in his family? Oh, I couldn't touch those. You couldn't touch? Why not? Oh, those were protected. How were they protected? His mama prayed. His mama prayed? <laughs> yeah. So if, if there is prayer being offered, you can't touch it? Oh. His mama prayed. His mama prayed. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Fire. Fire of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Through the cross of Jesus, you were defeated on the cross. And right now, pack your bags and come out of this body right now in Jesus' mighty name. You lost your battle on the cross. The blood of Jesus is against you. His spirit belongs to Jesus. Right now, loose him in Jesus' mighty name. Fire of God. Light of God in Jesus' name and every part of his soul. In light of God in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because of Christ, be healed in Jesus' name. And because of Christ, be free in Jesus' mighty name. Can you stand up? What is your name? My name is Darius. Darius, how are you feeling now? I'm tired. You're tired. You said that you destroyed your life, that uh, you were, you gave yourself women, cars, and all these things. Were you the one to say it? No? I know he was there for a long time. Yes, how did you know that? When I turned my life to God, I could hear him. I could hear his voice in my head. You could hear the voices in your head. He wanted me to go back to being a gangster. You were a gangster? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that voice was telling you to go back to be a gangster after you give your life to Jesus? Yeah. Okay. Now that unclean spirit that has been tormenting your life has been cast out in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Say, thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Thank you God for freedom and thank you God for deliverance. Amen. We just saw a clear picture. Kingdom of God confronting the kingdom of darkness. And we see how kingdom of God is always superior. And this young man can now live a free life. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. I want us to underline a couple things how devil operates from this story, uh, from this testimony that we just heard. I want you to notice that uh, first it started with obsession. So four steps to, that leads to demon possession. First, he started with obsession. If you heard what, uh, what the, uh, when he confessed, he said that he was obsessed with the movie of Godfather and he wanted to become a gangster. And then he got them money, women, drugs, guns and all these things. His obsession turned into oppression. oppression. He became to 
be oppressed by the things uh, by those things he began to uh, become he became an outlaw obviously you know the things that come with it he began to suffer with it he began to suffer hearing voices and then he went into depression and eventually he led into depression and so uh, it eventually led into possession so these four things these four steps that Satan uses in our lives to become to enter our life and to, to get hold to get a foothold in our life to begin to rule an area of our life I want you to begin to uh, also to notice in this testimony that this man he has already given his life to Jesus he's already been Christian for some time but there's certain things in, in his life that were not dealt with certain place where he gave to uh, gave to Satan before and he did not renounce and he didn't rebuke that and he did not get rid of it and so it was still controlling his life it was still calling him back those voices were constantly tormenting him calling him back to be against her and so anything we obsess over we eventually gonna get will be oppressed as a story testimony from Bryson we see that it all started first with an obsession with pornography which led to oppression and then depression and he can tell you that many times he just didn't want to do anything he felt guilty ashamed and depressed and as a result he needed deliverance because there's a certain area of his life that was demonized and so we need to make sure that that we do not fall into the traps of satan become obsessed over sinful things and next thing i want to go over is the open doors that satan through which satan can gain control over our life and he can enter our lives we need to be aware of the tactics of satan and how he operates in our lives so that we can avoid the trap of the satan and also so we can discover how he operates and uproot him out of our life amen, amen. first thing that i want to say uh, underline is willful sin when we continue constantly in a certain sin in our lives that will open a door to satan to come into our life and to destroy for example when my brother David he started um, in high school he started really young he started smoking he started smoking weed he was obsessed over it he was seeking he was see if, uh, wasting all his money on it eventually you run out of money you begin to steal it and because of this continuous sin in his life eventually it led him to harder and harder drugs it got it got him to the point where he completely lost his mind I remember at one point he was an he was all grown man he big guy you guys probably seen him running with the camera and um, I had to tie his shoes I had to take him to court because of all his tickets and all this stuff and he did not even know how to write his name on the paper that's how bad it got constant willing sin that he continued to commit led him to the point where he was completely out of his mind and thank God that God set him free completely and now if you talk to him you would not even know that he was ever uh, so out of his mind and so we see kingdom what kingdom of darkness does and we see the kingdom of God when it comes it brings complete restoration number two is unforgiveness unforgiveness toward God towards others or towards ourselves now on forgiveness towards God we understand and God is not at fault but releasing God that knowing that he did not cause the harm but knowing that Satan is behind every evil but releasing to uh, releasing forgiveness towards others and ourselves if we hold unforgiveness we can be we, we can come under influence of Satan there is this there is uh, one lady her name is Frida she was from Rwanda and in Rwanda she got caught in that civil war and they came to her house and they took 15 members of her family and they killed them with a machete and somehow she survived one of her dead relatives fell on her so she did not ki got killed but she got buried alive in a shallow grave and for 14 hours she was buried in the grave finally somebody when she was she was making some noise somebody was passing by they dug, they dug her up so you can imagine a person that got that saw 15 relatives of her got killed by machete she almost got killed and then being buried in a grave for 14 hours what kind of trauma do you live through and so sometime down point in her life she received Jesus she understood that she needed to forgive those people but of course as you can imagine she held on how how can I forgive those people what they've done to me I can't I can't just forgive them and she was she had 
some pain in her neck for a very long time and she had very severe nightmares and she's been asking God to set her free from it and for and to heal her but for all these years of being a Christian she she was not she, she could not get healed and so at the moment when she heard the message of forgiveness she decided to forgive right at the moment that she made a decision to forgive her pain in her neck left those headaches left and she was uh, from that point on she never experienced that nightmare ever again I don't know what you went through I don't know what has been done to you I don't know maybe you went through some hard things but if you hold on forgiveness unforgiveness gives a foothold to Satan in your life it gives an access to Satan in your life you need to forgive not because it's the right thing to do but because you need to be free and so when you forgive you release yourself you release yourself maybe you're holding on forgiveness today and you're experiencing some things in your body or maybe you experience some setbacks maybe you experience some pain in your life uh, in your physical body when you forgive when you truly release God can set you free from the demonic influence amen, amen. Um, another door that Satan can use is fear he can come through trauma or abuse one example as Derek Prince's wife and those of you that know Derek Prince you know he's a minister that's that that ministered deliverance to many many people and at one point he noticed that his wife would never go into elevators with him and he asked why don't you go to elevators why you always take stairs he always thought she because she wanted to be healthy but she said that I'm claustrophobic I'm afraid of small places because when she was very very young her mother didn't see that uh, she crawled into pantry small place she closed the pantry and left and she was in that small space and she got so terrified when she was young that the spirit of fear entered her life and from that point on she was always tormented by spirit of fear and she was afraid of small places so if you have any fear every every um any uh extreme fear not the not natural fears like you know jumping off the third story third story building it's a natural fear you're gonna break your legs but i'm talking about some some uh, some some unnatural things that you can't explain that you experience horror in your life that spirit can be broken of your life in jesus mighty name um another one is spoken curse words words spoken by authority or by or words spoke, sp spoken of others over yourself maybe your parents told you that you are not good enough maybe you did something you had bad grades and their parents told them you that you never amount to anything you're stupid those words they have power and you need to break those words over your life so that you can be live free I remember one lady in our in our home group and uh, she had a relationship as before she was had a serious relationship with God she was kind of in and out of church and uh, she had a relationship with her boyfriend and then eventually things didn't work out and her boyfriend uh, they ended the relationship and the relationship was just ended sour and he told her that you will never get married you only you either with me or you're never gonna get married to anybody else of this this girl in our home group she went on she eventually recommitted her life to God she began to serve God with full heart and some years down the road she got another relationship and the relationship got serious and she start she started thinking to get married and they were actually engaged at that point and they were already playing the wedding everything was going towards the wedding and at one point she comes to us and she stayed after the home group and she started talking with us and said you know I'm I think I'm thinking of canceling this engagement I completely all of a sudden stopped having feelings towards him uh towards my fiance I don't I don't like him anymore I have no feelings I need to end this relationship and we told him you know why I mean this is a, he's, he's a great guy he loves God everything there's no reason why you should end the relationship and she said I just I don't know but I need to end the relationship we begin to tell her that there is a spiritual problem behind it that there could be something that's behind this fear and so she began to ask Holy Spirit to reveal that and Holy Spirit revealed that very moment when the boyfriend spoke those words over her and we and she remembered and she said yes my boy my ex-boyfriend said that I will never get married and this and that and we said let's pray and let's break it we prayed with her right there after the home group we broke those words and right after that immediately feelings for her fiance came back and now they're happily married and they have a great family together let's put our hands together for Jesus and the last door that Satan uses is a cult anything horoscopes dedicated objects 
palm reading, Ouija boards, talking to the dead, anything of that sort, anything that has to do and connect with an occultic world, getting charms, good luck charms, all these things, they are demonic, they are from demonic kingdom and they only bring oppression and they only bring darkness in a, into our life. We need to first of all we don't we, we as Christians we can't mess with those things we can we have to understand that it only brings curse into our lives it brings nothing good it brings no luck and so I remember a story of uh, one one man it was early in our days we were still learning about uh, th these things and he came to uh he came to our uh, to church pulled into parking lot very distressed he was a high school friend of ours and he uh, he began to say he's like I don't know what just happened for me for the past couple of days I got in multiple car accidents he had a nice car and he when he pulled in the parking lot his car was dented all over the place like I was like dude what you, what just happened and he's he's like I don't understand I've been getting all these car accidents he had a girlfriend at the time he's like we just keep constantly getting the fights uh he started getting speeding tickets and other tickets he's like just hell broke loose for past for past three or four days and so when we start talking when we were talking outside we noticed that there was a uh, dream catcher hanging in his um car uh, rear view mirror and we said where'd you get this he said well my girlfriend gave me three days ago what a coincidence right and so we said we, we told him look you can't have anything to do with dem that this is not a dream catcher that's a dream attractor okay that's a curse attractor you can't have those kind of things in your life and so when we told him about it he threw it away we prayed prayer after him things went back to normal as though nothing happened we as Christians we have to understand how Satan operates we have to stay away from it and if we ever dabble with those things we need to rebuke and renounce and break every chain and every foothold of Satan in our lives amen, amen. final thing the way we break curse over our life the way we break the, the demonic hold of our life three things we repent we ask God for forgiveness if it was dabbling with witchcraft or if it's if it's unforgiveness or if it's uh sin in our lives or it's fear or maybe we spoke negative things over ourselves we need to ask God for forgiveness number two we need to renounce it we need to say we don't want nothing to do with it we we release it we uh, uh we reject it out of our lives and number three we need to replace we need to speak opposite of what been spoken over us we need to speak God's promises God's word we need to get God's word into our lives because God's word is the truth and truth truth sets us free amen amen, amen church amen. are we gonna walk in freedom come on we have to understand that Jesus has paid the price on the cross for us to be free Jesus came to break the power of Satan, to break the power of sin, to break the power of the kingdom of Satan over our lives so that we can truly live free in the kingdom of God. Amen. The, Jesus was bound so that we can be free. Jesus' whole mission was so that no demonic influence will have reign and rule over our life. We as Christians, we were meant to dominate. We were meant to rule. We are, the, we, were, we were created in the image and likeness of God, which is to have dominion over every creeping thing, have dominion of every demonic influence of our lives, of every sinful influence of our life. And right now, as we're gonna go into worship, we're gonna worship God. We're gonna declare the power of the name of Jesus. And then we're gonna pray and we're gonna renounce everything. We're gonna ask God for forgiveness and we're gonna break every foothold of Satan every chain of Satan of our lives. Amen church? Are you ready to do that?